المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا زدنا علما يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته So the meaning of number four, you come forward. You know number four. There's something missing in the text. Is that what's missing in the text? Is that there's a piece missing. Is that the hadith is actually attributed to Allah. The hadith is attributed to Allah. So basically, you can have four attributions. Number one, if a hadith is attributed to Allah, so what attributed means? And the Prophet says that Allah says that it becomes a hadith Qudsi. If the hadith is attributed to the Prophet, it becomes a what you call a marfu hadith. The technical term, it's what you call a marfu hadith. Which means it's attributed to Rasulullah. And it also you can attribute it to Sahaba and Tabi'i. That we leave it for now, inshallah. You can attribute it to Sahaba and Tabi'i. In other words, if Abu Bakr and Umar say something, we actually also term it a hadith. It's termed a hadith. That's called a hadith from food. Different, different name. And does it have the same legal value? Does it have the same legal value? So this hadith, what's missing here? Is what the Qadr Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should say after that, Ya Qul Rabb or something, Qal Allah, Allah says. Because the meaning of the hadith is, Man shawalahu al Quran wa dhikri. What's the meaning of that? Man, whoever shawalahu, what shawalahu means? Possess so or keep busy or occupy. Where is the fa'il for occupy? Shawalahu. Where is the fa'il? Can't be mad, the fa'il always dead left him. 
Al-Quran is the fire. Man shaghalahul Quran, whatever the Quran occupies. Wa dhikri, the Quran and my remembrance. Whatever the Quran and my remembrance occupies, who occupies who? Man shaghalah, who? That who there is a mafoolun? Bibi. So whatever the Quran and my remembrance occupies this person, occupies this person from what? Ayn Mas'alati. You want to understand the sentence structure? Whoever the Quran and my remembrance, Fa'il, occupies this person, who? Ma'ul bi Ayn Dikri, from, oh sorry, sorry, Ayn Mas'alati, from my, from asking me. So why I say it's Hadith Qudsi, that the Prophet says, mean whoever the Quran and my remembrance mean the Prophet. No. He means Allah's remembrance. So the Hadith Qudsi. A'atayituhu, A'atayituhu means what? What does it mean? I have, I have granted, or I will grant, A'atayituhu ta'u fa'in. I'll tell you too, I will grant this person Afghan. What Afghan mean? Better. Ma? Than that which? Uh, that I have given those who ask. I will give the person that the Quran and the memory me occupies more than I'll give those who ask. Why do you think Allah said that? We always say that du'a bukhul ibadah. Du'a is the, the essence of worship. And du'a is silah al mu'min. The du'a is the weapon of the believer. Why this hadith is, do you think the Prophet is telling you that what is greater than du'a is to be occupied with the Quran and the Prophet? Why do you think that is? And I've seen other versions, and I must check, I must have checked the versions. But the other version says, Man shahalahu al-Qur'anu an dhikri wa masalati. Different version. It says what? Whatever the Qur'an occupies from remembering me and from asking. Why would the Qur'an have that superiority? It's... <coughs> You also remember because I'm saying why why does when Allah says the Quran is occupying something, what do you think Allah means by that? I think part of our, of our I think what goes wrong in the discussion is that what goes wrong is that when we think about being occupied with the Quran, we think automatically about reciting and not understanding. We think about someone who is Machayim. Machayim al Quran decrees, Mr. Rabbi My belief is that's what they take of the hadith. They take of the hadith is someone who is occupied with reading, studying, and understanding the Quran. Because that was revealed. It was revealed to a community who understood the Quran, and the hadith comes in that context. You with me? So for me, the full context of the hadith. It comes in a community when they read, they understand. So when the Quran is being recited, it is actually a process of education. You with me? It's a process of ilm. And therefore, because the Quran is a process of learning, that learning far outweighs asking or even praying. That learning in Islam outweighs asking Allah and it outweighs praying to Allah. You with me? This is the Islamic word. It is ilm outweighs all of that. Because ilm creates a permanent shift in your consciousness and direction. You with me? Once you study, you can't unknow. Once you know, you can't unknow. But the, but the, but the thing with, with worship is that worship is like Enos. You feel pious, the Enos is bubbling and you're worshiping. But God's coming now, what could it be like Enos again there? And then afterwards, get finished. You want me to tell us the, 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 just about, about inspiration for a moment. 
But knowledge gives you permanent chips. It permanently changes your life. So therefore, man shawada al Quran and and why specifically the Quran? Because the highest form of learning can by the most obvious logic, the highest form of learning has to be a source which is undoubted, which is the word of Allah. It's like from a logical point of view that the highest thing you can learn is something from a being that knows everything and gives you an untainted book. Like logically, who, who, who can claim that? No one can claim that. Not even Rasulullah can claim to know everything. But Allah can claim to know everything. Allah does know everything. And He gives you, selects for you a sampling of His knowledge that is for you. So what could be higher than that? Therefore, وَفَضْلُ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ Hadith continues And the superiority of the words of Allah عَلَى سَائِهِ الْكَلَامِ Upon all other words Because all other words come from the created These words come from the uncreated eternal world only So therefore the superiority of Of His words عَلَى سَائِهِ الْكَلَامِ كَفَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَى خَلْقِهِ it is equivalent to trying to compare Allah. It's like the superiority of Allah over His creation. And what's that comparison? The comparison is one of infinite difference. The comparison of Allah to His creation is one of infinite. You can't define the differences between it. Therefore, there's infinite difference between becoming a student of Quran and a student of anything else. I will make us two students of the Quran. So basically a summary of the hadith. They spend on the time and the time. On the time how long it takes. Because I don't come to memorize, but we have to break this barrier. We have to be a community who also memorizes our text. So Bismillah, stop what you you start. So what we'll do is we'll do everything twice. Two inside, two outside. Two inside, two outside. Two inside, two outside. And you'll see a lot of things to remember as the heart, the hadith, inshallah. Bismillah. Man shabala hul Qur'anu wa dhikri. All together. Man shabala hul Qur'anu wa dhikri. Man shabala hul Qur'anu wa dhikri. Again. Man shabala hul Qur'anu wa dhikri. Now from memory. Man shabala hul Qur'anu. Quranu wa dhikri again. Man shawala hul Quranu wa dhikri. Replace al Quranu fa'il again. Man shawala hul Quranu wa dhikri. An mas'alati. From the text. An mas'alati again. An mas'alati again. An mas'alati. From memory. An mas'alati again. An mas'alati. Now read from the beginning to Al Masati from the text twice. Man shawala hul Quranu wa dhikri Al Masati again. Man shawala hul Quranu wa dhikri Al Masati. Memory. Man shawala hul Quranu wa dhikri Al Masati again. Man shawala hul Quranu wa dhikri Al Masati. أعطيته أفضل ما again أعطيته أفضل ما again أعطيته أفضل ما again أعطيته أفضل ما مم أعطيته أفضل ما again أعطيته أفضل ما again أعطيته أفضل ما زين تعرف شو بيجي من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أجد من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أجد من شغله 
تويت وعطي السائلين تقدر وعطي السائلين تقدر وعطي السائلين تقدر وعطي السائلين ما بيمني وعطي السائلين تقدر وعطي السائلين تقدر وعطي السائلين بسائلين إذا ما كون بين الناس وعطي السائلين كيف ما بيمني من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أعطي السائلين. من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أعطي السائلين. من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أعطي السائلين. وطبعا من ردا. من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أعطي السائلين. That part there can actually be called as a hadith in itself. It was quite acceptable to call a part of hadith in all times. It is not a matter of a hadith. It's many parts of hadith we. We will go to the Nikah of the Sunnah Deen, part of Hadith, all the time we go to the part of Hadith. So that's a complete meaning if you call it as a, as a, as part of a, of a Hadith, because it has complete meaning on its own. I've got to be stopped to watch, I said it's about three minutes. It's about, about three minutes. You spend three minutes of your life, and you memorize Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's just say it quickly. Wa faddu kalami illahi, you get that? Wa faddu kalami illahi, you get that? وفضل كلام الله يجيب وفضل كلام الله يجيب كلها من كلام يجيب from memory وفضل كلام الله يجيب next part على سائر الكلام from text على سائر الكلام يجيب from memory from memory يجيب From the second one, we will do from the beginning. We will do kalam illahi ala sa'iri kalam. We will do kalam illahi ala sa'iri kalam. From the beginning. We will do kalam illahi ala sa'iri kalam. We will do kalam illahi ala sa'iri kalam. Now from the text. كفضل الله على خلقه كفضل الله على خلقه يجب كفضل الله على خلقه يجب كفضل الله على خلقه ممري كفضل الله على خلقه يجب كفضل الله على خلقه يجب كفضل الله على خلقه يجب وفضل بين وفضل كلام الله وفضل كلام الله على سائر الكلام كفضل الله على خلقه. ساتك رب عمري. وفضل كلام الله على سائر الكلام كفضل الله على خلقه. ساتك رب لا تنسى كل شيء مني بس إيزي. وفضل كلام الله على سائر الكلام. كفضل الله على خلقه. هذا هو المبين كان إن شاء الله. من شغله القرآن وذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أعطي السائلين. وفضل كلام الله على سائر الكلام كفضل الله على خلقه. بركة إن شاء الله. You scaffold your memory and you bit by bit, and if you're going to memorize and you're going to repeat the same bit every day, it will become part of your permanent memory. But you say, "Hey, you're going to learn Quran, Alama." Eventually, becomes part of your permanent memory. In other words, it becomes effortless to recall the hadith. How does great effort requires great exertion and concentration? Eventually, it becomes effortless. Like the songs we hear in the shop all the time, you start singing after all the day, I know the lyrics, you sing it subconsciously. Or I call the chicken the chicken songs. You have them enough to become part of your 
the other the next just like that. So the same person was there with this. No hadith. And and why not? I knew the Quran says he says that's why they do hadith. Do hadith to Allah. He says why do we do hadith? And he says that the reason we do hadith is that is that we get so many other voices and so many other so much other speech we hear. But if you just part that for a moment and you go, Qal Allah, Qal Rasulullah, Qal Allah, Qal Rasulullah, Qal Allah, Qal Rasulullah, it starts basically you hearing Allah, you hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that becomes a voice that starts programming your mind. Sure. So in other words, if you start memorizing this hadith, it actually becomes part of a voice inside of you. Like it becomes part of a voice inside of you. It becomes like a marker within your belief that I cannot compare anything to the Quran. So this is this is this is a, this becomes a important uh, anchor points within your belief structure. What is the anchor point in your belief structure? It is the words of Allah, the words of Rasulullah. One of the difficulties that we have in our time is everybody is so busy with analysis and categorization and critical thinking that they have no anchor points anymore. The anchor points are removed because people assume when you analyze the anchor points they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't apply anymore. That's like a ridiculous thing. Because just because you analyze the anchor point and say, okay, that is hadith and these are how Sunnis interpret, that's how Sharp said, they put everything in the block and something. It doesn't apply. Of course it applies. It's the words of all the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No matter how much analytics you apply to the number, how you dissect it, it is still the anchor point. You with me? So the anchor point remains the, the anchor point. How we interpret this, we can speak about that, those things. But I'm saying, if you understand, it's still the anchor point. You can't say it's not the anchor point. You can't say the hadith doesn't say the kalam Allah is superior to everything else. It says that. In which way and all the stuff that we can discuss. So we, we have to have, especially in our time now, where everything is relative. And when everything becomes relative, nothing means anything anymore. So we as believers have to instill anchor points into our community, and our anchor points are anchored on the divine. Because here Allah is the only true permanent. He is the only truly permanent. He's Al Haq. And that is the anchor point which you anchor your life upon. And once you relativize the anchor point, you get lost in the sea. You get lost in the sea of when nothing means anything. So we have to be careful of, of this is one of the difficult areas. For me, that's, if I to summarize what I personally believe to be the biggest danger of our time, is the belief that everything is relative. That nothing, there's no anchor point anymore. That truth is actually something personal. I don't believe that. The truth is Allah. And what He reveals is truth. Truth is the messenger, and what He speaks is the truth. It's not something which is just like, that's my truth and your truth. And... Because then truth means nothing. If I shall do the whole, do whatever the whole thing, it doesn't mean anything. So I think that's for me, that's truth. Because once you, you take those anchor points away, and then anything that emanates from the anchor point, any laws, the laws also become relative. And the moral code also becomes relative. And everything becomes so relativized, what? We remove it all. What remains? Nafs. That's it. Naked nafs. And all you will see is nafs. Because all the all the and all the guidance points and all the anchor points have been removed, and the person becomes just pure nafs. And this is a very culture that. The culture, I mean, that happened to the Christian faith much more than the Christian faith. Because the Christian faith has been completely torn apart because nothing means anything anymore. Even if Jesus speaks in the Bible, it doesn't mean anything because like, the spirit of the Lord and it doesn't really apply and all that stuff. So, you know, we must, we must be careful of that everything becomes relative. These are the anchor points. So, you're memorizing the anchor points within your being now. You come to the, the morning circle, Buruj. It's an anchor point in your being. You remember the hadith, it's an anchor point in your being, and the rest of the day we, we strive to understand the anchor points. If we internalize them, then we try to understand them. 
And this is what Gaijin sees. Gaijin sees. The Prophet only had three things that he had to do. You only have to kitab. You have to do the kitab. You have to recite the book to the people. Number two, you have to do the kitab. You have to teach the book to the people. Or you have to key him. And you have to transform their lives to conform to Allah's guidance. That is a prophetic mission. That's our mission. So don't... Uh, I try to encourage you to take this seriously and to, to memorize, to spend five or six or seven minutes and to internalize the verbatim words of your messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam is something which is a divine gift. It's a gift that your tongue can repeat the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What is on his tongue to the Sahaba can emanate from your tongue to your family. It's a gift from Allah. So try to to make some effort to, to memorize, internalize, and to, to feel it. And to feel that this is something which is, which is illuminating your heart. Something which is good in your heart. You know, if you are good in our hearts, the understanding of Allah, we will see you next week, inshallah. I must not show you the hadith, but uh, you must be nice faster. Marikallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.